Hey friends, my name is Gia, and I just left. Ow! Eat, laugh, and live. <laughs> Welcome. Today, guys, I'm going to show you my protein naan recipe. It was inspired by an outing that hubby and I had at a Mediterranean restaurant, and I was just noshing on a ton of naan. Because I'm a vegan bodybuilder, I'm very aware of how many proteins, fats, and carbs I consume. So I decided maybe I could make this recipe in a way that some of the macronutrients, proteins, fats, and carbs, come from protein instead of all carbs. What I would have you guys remember, just like anything else, you can have too much protein. Right? If you, your body doesn't utilize the protein that you consume, it can turn into fat. And some people's bodies may not even be able to met metabolize high levels of protein. So before you start thinking that eating 10 servings, 20 servings of this is the healthy thing to do because it's just protein, just remember, too much of it can, can also cause harm. So before you... Um, decide that high levels amount of protein is what you should be doing, consult with somebody. Um, I do have coaching packages available, link in the description box if you want. So that being said, let's get back to the recipe. <laughs> so this entire recipe, guys, makes 10 servings. Each serving has 21 grams of protein, 14.7 grams of carbs, and 1 gram of fat. So, um, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go ahead and just tell you the measurements of the ingredients that I'm putting in to the recipe. We're going to plop it all together and let's take it from there. We're starting with one and one fourth cup of all purpose flour, one and one fourth cup of plain soy protein powder. I just got this from the bulk section of my grocery store, it's way cheaper that way. Um, and I personally just like to get things from the bulk if I can instead of maybe going to supplement shop because usually supplement shops are way more expensive. Um, we have one cup of wheat gluten. Wheat gluten, for those that are not familiar, is very high in protein. It's about 90% protein. Um, the reason that I'm mixing wheat gluten and soy protein together is because wheat gluten, when you combine it with water, is just really gummy and tough. Breaking it up with soy protein and a flour actually help make a beautiful texture. We have one tablespoon of coconut sugar, brown coconut sugar, and two and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast, which is one packet. We have one teaspoon of salt, plain old iodized salt. You can use whatever salt you like. I also have two cups of water warmed up to 100 to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. I did use a food thermometer to make sure that it's in the temperature that it needs to be because it's there for the yeast and if it gets too high or it gets too cold, the yeast will not like it. And I do have calculated half a teaspoon of oil of olive oil just to spritz the skillet as I get ready to cook. All right, guys, so let me get this thing together and let's go ahead and start the cooking. So guys, to get started, I'm going to put all of the dry ingredients in this bowl, including the yeast. That includes the flour, the wheat gluten, the soy protein, the salt, the active dry yeast, the, um, the coconut sugar, and this is going to go in this bowl. I am going to use my mixer with the, the bread hook. Um, I think that's what it's called. I don't know. I make names up if I don't know what it's called. Um, because it's just going to be easy, a lot easier to mix. You can do this with your hand, it's totally fine, but if you have a mixer, I suggest going for it um, because it'll just help make sure that everything is incorporated really well. All right, guys, so let me go ahead and get, put this together. All right, friends, so I have everything in this bowl, as you can see, including the yeast. I'm going to go ahead and just put it in the mixer. Going to make sure I lock my mixer before I turn it on. I'm just going to put it to one, just to get the dry ingredients all mixed together. Don't put it on too high, otherwise it'll go. <laughs> all right. Now I'm going to slowly add in this water. It is this water is warmed up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Your dough, guys, will start to look like this. Go ahead and let it mix for a little bit. 
and really get incorporated. All right, so it's been mixing for about a minute or two. I have a piece of dough on my camera. <laughs> Um, it's been mixing up now for about a minute or two. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. This is what it looks like guys And you'll see the way that it pulls off. It kind of just pulls off of the the hook there. It's not too sticky It's pretty much taken all of the bits off of the side What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just knead it a little bit And really just make sure that things are just nice and even this is what this is how dense it should feel. Okay. Shape it into a nice ball. Punch that baby down. It is going to be very tough and very heavy right now. But what we're going to do next is we are going to leave that in the bowl. I'm going to dampen this towel and we're going to cover this this bowl and just let it sit for 45 minutes. And that's when the rising and the magic happens. Okay, Google, set a timer for 45 minutes. All right, 45 minutes, starting now. Thanks, Googs. All right, I'm gonna walk away, clean up a little bit, and yeah. Hello, it has since been 45 minutes. And this baby has been resting. <laughs> so I know you guys are gonna be tempted well, maybe some of you are going to be tempted to peek through it every in, during the 45 minutes. Don't. Just let it rest. If you're trying to take a nap, you wouldn't want the blanket taken off of you every five minutes to check in. So just let it rest. Now, now that I'm going to take this off, guys, look how much this thing has doubled in size. And remember how tough it was before? It's so much softer now. It's so much more pliable. It's just so much more air inside it. So now what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to take this out of the bowl. Whoop! And I'm going to split it into 10 pieces by cutting it. The easiest way to do that, guys, is first I'm going to shape it into a somewhat even ball. I don't really want to work too much of the air out. I've got it on my cutting board, and I'm going to cut it first into halves. So just a rough eyeball. So now I'm going to do my best to slice this into five pieces. You guys can measure it out, whatever you want, if you really want to get finicky. But what I'm going to do is eyeball it. So if this is, if I cut it like this, so I'm guessing the five pieces is going to be about, I'm going to score it so you can see. One, two, three, or five. I think that's about even enough scored. So I'm going to go ahead and cut through. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go ahead and shape these into balls and make them into little pockets, turning the bottoms in, turning the edges in. And I'm going to just let it sit on the sill pad that I have. You can let it sit anywhere. I'm gonna go ahead and cover these guys again with the paper, or with the damp towel and just let it rest while I cut this guy up. Again, I'm going to score it. I'm going to guess that it's about one. One, two, three, four, five. That looks a little bit off, but I'm not tripping. I'm going to go through the same process with these guys. I'm actually going to transfer 
them over here so I can roll out on the sill pad since it's a smoother surface. I'm going to go ahead and let that sit for another five minutes. Okay, Google, turn the timer on for five minutes. Sure, five minutes. It's been about five minutes, guys. And these babies have been resting. You can see that they've gotten maybe just a little bit fluffier again. Maybe you can't see the details in the camera, but they are a little bit fluffier. I've gone ahead and I have slightly spritzed this royal rolling pin with a little bit of oil and also this sill pad with a little bit of oil. You don't have to use a sill pad, it's just what I, I have around the house and so that's what I'm going to use. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll each one of these out ever so slightly. I'm going to go ahead and start pulling them apart. You can see just how much softer it is than the original dough. And the reason that I like to use a rolling pin, guys, is because it'll more evenly get it get get the surface flat, and it'll allow it to cook more evenly on the skillet, which I have, by the way, preheating at 350 degrees. If you guys use a normal pan, um, put it to just over medium heat. The only reason I'm using the skillet, guys, it's just got a bigger bigger surface, so I can cook things more quickly. Now that you've got that flat, you've got it about this big. See about the palm of my hand. I'm going to go ahead and put this back underneath the towel while I roll out the other ones. I'm going to go ahead and keep rolling the rest of these pieces out, guys. In the meantime, what I'm going to do now is I am also going to start cooking the rest of or the ones that have been resting for a little bit and rolled out. So I'm going to go ahead and just spray my skillet ever so lightly. I'm going to take the first one that I rolled out and just put it at the hottest part of the skillet. Alright friends, so it's been about five minutes sitting on one side. I'm going to recklessly flip it with my hand. <laughs> Use a spatula please. <laughs> and I'm going to just let it sit on the other side for another five minutes. Alright guys, so it's been another five minutes and look at these puppies. I'm going to finish up the other ones and I'll show you what it looks like. Alright, the second batch looks to be done. The only difference that I did with this one, guys, is I put just a smidge bit more oil just to properly coat each piece. I'm going to go ahead and let this cool. Turn the skillet off. Whoo, hot. Use a spatula. <laughs> All right. So you guys can maybe see the difference. With a little bit less oil, it came out like this. With a little bit more oil, it came out like this. And it feels a little bit fluffier, actually, for some reason. So maybe you just, just use a little bit more oil. Um, I still feel very comfortable that I was still in that half teaspoon oil range. Hi baby, my hubby just came home. Um, here's the finished piece, guys. I already actually took took a bite, but I'll take a bite in front of you. Oh, it's so good, guys. It is so easy to bite into, and in my opinion, it tastes better than some of the other nons that are out there. I hope you find this recipe delicious, guys. If you do better following a recipe written down, link in the description box to my website. I have the recipe written down for you. <laughs>
<laughs> if there's any other food that you guys want me to try to make, uh, vegan, high protein, maybe not high protein, you let me know. Put it in the comments down below. I'm happy to give it a whirl. If you want to see more content from this mug, <laughs> hit the subscribe button. There's a notification bell right next to it. Ding, 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 ding. Every time this baby gorilla posts a video. <laughs> If you do like this ki kind of content, guys, hit that like button to let me know that I'm going the right direction with the content that I'm building for you. I only ever make content that's based on questions or requests that people send over my way. If you aren't already following me on social media, feel free to do so if you want to. And if you guys do need a coach, that link is in the description box as well. Alright guys, I'm going to keep noshing and I'm going to spend time with my hub lobes. Have a great day. See ya. <laughs>